Put a finger down if you've spent 15 hours sewing this week. Should I elaborate? So I'm currently in the mood of doing everything myself, including making my own clothing. I would love to design and sew an entire wardrobe in the future, but my skill level is still beginner, which is why I decided to start with altering. So I thrifted some clothes. I even did a thrift haul on my vlog channel. And my goal was to alter these according to what I want the outcome to be. Just little changes to make these pieces unique and fit me. I definitely went a little bit insane this week because I was also moving and I did all of the sewing within four days. So here is that story. Supplies, motherfucker. I think the most important factor in sewing by hand is making sure that you use an appropriate needle for the fabric you're gonna be working with. Thanks for coming. This is candidate one. My grandma told me that this is actually, as I've assumed, a traditional Swiss nightgown. The sleeves in the armpit situation are interesting, which is why I want to get rid of the sleeves. It's just not comfortable. And also I want to renovate the neckline. For that, I took an old tank top and I tried to create nice rounded openings. Also, I wasn't sure if tracing a tank top was even, so I tried to measure both of the sides. And also, as a beginner, it's very easy to forget to add in seam allowance, so that is also what I calculated in. All right, so after dinner at 4 p.m., I was at my desk and I haven't started sewing at this point, so I was kind of excited to just get started. Here, I want to note that I didn't have an iron, which would have made everything a lot easier to work with and made the seams a lot more crisp. I made these little slits on the inside of the circle to make the fabric stretch out a bit because this fabric is not stretchy at all and I think it did help make a nicer curve. For the majority of my hand sewing, I do a back stitch. I find it looks pretty neat. I'm able to make a nice straight line. Also, I find it to be a strong stitch type and pretty simple. Pretty simple and pretty fun. For a brief moment, I decided not to work on the neckline and not do it at all, but then at 1am I was like, okay, let's do it. And I, I kind of regret it because this happened. They're not balanced at all. But here is my imperfect dress. Okay, so here she is with uneven straps, but I gotta say, she's a lot more comfortable, has a new look, a new neckline, no sleeves, and if I'm up for it in the future, I can actually just correct the other straps so both are even, but otherwise, I think this came out pretty well, and I also think that the stitches look really nice, so props to myself. This next thrift flip is going to be current with the times because it's turning fall and a lot of us are gonna go thrifting and find these sweaters that are actually pretty cool but kind of unshapely as I would describe it here. And my plan for this was to crop it but still keep the lower seam type band. I don't know how to call it. So make sure that you calculate in the seam allowance for connecting the both of them. Pinning this actually took a while because I wanted it to be accurate and make sure that the lower band is straight. What I especially looked at is that the existing seams align so that looks good when it's flipped right side out. 
Also be aware that fabrics like this can be overstretched, so you might have to correct that with pinning them properly or stretching them or molding them so that everything works out in the end. Looking at this existing seam on the inside, I tried to copy that, so I did a hemming stitch, which basically you just loop it through the little first loop you make, and this ensures that your knit fabric is not going to open. I'm confident this is not going to open up again. Here it is, my cropped sweater. I'm super happy with how it turned out, especially that I managed to install the bottom line like that. One thing is just that at the back it bunched up a bit because I did not align them perfectly and there was like access fabric on the on the top portion. But you know what? It's okay. The existing seams align beautifully and that's all we care about. Now I can wear this with all of my high-waisted bottoms. This skirt definitely resembles a style that I would like to incorporate more in my wardrobe, but this is also the most intimidating project. The skirt is beautiful, but the waist is too wide, so I was planning to take in the back or the sides. It took me a while to figure it out, but this was my first draft of how I wanted to alter the skirt. The very first thing I did was cut open the lining, which you don't have to be too careful with because you can't see it and I actually didn't even close it again because I didn't have any time, but I'm gonna get back to that after this video. So I measured as well as I could lines down both of the sides um, and then I just cut out the middle in hopes not to use it again. But then I was just super confused about how to sew it and work with that little bottom slit there. After I pinned it and tried it on, I realized we need a zipper. So the daunting part starts and I had to install a zipper without planning it in. Here I was just thinking, oh shit, how am I gonna correct this? My middle line is crooked and worst of all, the zipper, how it aligns with that middle line is just terrible. So I opened it around the bottom of the zipper and just tried to correct that and I look so fucking tired. Lastly, I decided to reuse the button as well. So I just actually attached the buttonhole part to the skirt and then I just attach the button to the skirt itself and it worked out oh my god i'm done i'm fucking done and i think the button works as well let's see kind of tight but she is fucking in can you see it oh my god oh my god we're done we're done we're done Here it is. Look, it, it looks fine, you know, the around the waist, but once you look down at the bottom of the zipper, it's bunching up weirdly, and I am just accepting that for now. I might come back to this in the future when I have more time and energy, but I'm super happy that this skirt fits me now, and I hope not too many people look at my butt. I'm also happy with how the front is lining up and this little back slit, which I was very confused about, but I made it work. Yes, I'm going to wear this out and hope that people don't notice. Now let's talk about what I've learned, okay? As a beginner, you come across a lot of difficulties because you don't know shit and that's actually how you learn things. So you hopefully don't make these mistakes in the future. And I decided to do this little segment so you don't make these mistakes in your projects. Okay, let's first talk about the fact that this took probably like five times to 10 times longer than it should have or than it could have. Because with a sewing machine, everything goes faster. But one positive about sewing by hand is, first of all, I find it very therapeutic, but also since you do everything so much slower, you have a lot more time to think. Sorry, I'm just, my mom has like these creepy dolls and it's like sitting in front of me. 
Um, <laughs> You have a lot more time to think about what you're doing right now and what you're going to do and also you're super motivated not to make mistakes because it's tedious to open your stitches but especially if you spend an hour on 10 centimeters and you've sewn it by hand. That's a good thing and the bad thing about sewing by hand. But now let's talk about my technical mistakes and what you should avoid. I fucked up the straps of this dress because I just drew a neckline disregarding symmetry so what you can do is fold the dress and then cut through both layers. That can be kind of risky as well so I in the future I'm going to create a pattern, make sure it's symmetrical obviously and then it should be fine. Also I wanted to note that you should not keep on working on something when you're super tired because you're just prone to more mistakes and I feel like if I would have had a clear mind and energy I would have probably noticed how imbalanced the widths of my straps were. I've touched on this earlier but knit fabrics can definitely wear out so if you're working with something that has been worn in the past be aware of the stretch. What I did wrong here is not spreading out both of the fabrics evenly so in the end there was more of like the top portion which ended up in these two bunches so make sure while pinning and sewing to stretch out either material to make sure that everything is even when you sew it. Now we're talking about the opposite. For the skirt, I was working with a material that was not stretchy at all and I assumed that it would be enough to have these two little elastic bands on the waist, but I was wrong. So plan in an opening for materials like this. So I definitely did not plan in an opening and when I decided to put in the zipper, I didn't measure everything properly and align the zipper with the middle seam running down that I was going to make. So everything was kind of off in the end. For this, I highly recommend you watching tutorials and making sure that you prepare everything properly. And if you do that, I think sewing in a zipper can actually go pretty smoothly and your skirt can actually look good. Let's say goodbye to the characters of today. First, we have unbalanced um, straps and interesting collar line of this Swiss nightgown. Then we have, fuck you, this shit took me way too long. This freaking zipper, how should we call it? Zipper trauma. But definitely motivation to learn how to do this shit in the future better and calculate this in because I did not calculate having to sew a zipper. But I did it. It doesn't look too bad, okay? I might be able to alter it in the future if I want to. Teddy sweater actually turned out better than I thought. I think this bottom elastic is also super even. I'm happy with her. A little applause for our characters and for myself and my hands for sewing these things. By the way, I'm not gonna do a lot more hand sewing in the future just for fun because I'm planning to save up for a sewing machine. At this rate, we're not really gonna move on to those bigger projects I want to tackle in the future. So look out for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that this video went up late. I usually upload every Friday and as I mentioned earlier, I just moved. I'm here <laughs> in my new place which i've lived in before and i've actually grown up here that video will be up on friday i will see you then in the meantime you can check out my instagram which is yusuf reinhardt give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to watch this journey of this person doing i don't know what i, I don't know what the future is gonna hold hopefully some more sewing <laughs> and um have a great week bye